praise his holy name. Well, glory be to God. Well, it's offering time. Hallelujah. We're here to give unto the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, giving the, the ministry, praise God, so he can take our, 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 our seeds that we sow in love into the kingdom and cause us to reap of love in the kingdom. Why? Because we give because we love God and love people. Hallelujah. So that's why I tithe and that's why I give. Praise his holy name. Man, we're just so thankful that Jesus makes a way for us to be able to be blessed financially so we can give more to his kingdom to bless all over the world and our community. Praise his holy name. Man, don't, don't forget that every fourth Sunday is Mission Sunday and any month we have a fifth Sunday, it's Stretch Offering Sunday. So, man, just be praying for you know, to the Father and ask Him to give you money to give into those times. It's only four times a, a year we have stretch offering, and then every month we have missions. But just remember, you know, John chapter 15, verse 7 says, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you can ask what you will and you shall receive it. So that's what I base my giving on. I ask Him, you know, for extra money to send to me so that I can give extra into His kingdom. And I just believe that His word's true. And if I do what His Word says, He'll do what His Word says. Hallelujah. So don't be speaking things against you being able to give into His kingdom. If something arises and an offering happens and you can't give, say, well, praise God, Lord, I don't know what happened this time, but I'm just thankful that next time I'm going to have plenty enough money to give. And bind the devil from interfering with your, your money and your finances and command him to take his hands off of it because that's more your responsibility than God's because he's done gave me and you all the power to take care of that so i bind the enemy from stopping the finances that belong to the people that will give into the kingdom and give to true christian fellowship i command you to take your hands off the money that belongs to our church and i thank you lord the money's coming in to build our church and to buy a van for fellowships hallelujah and for, for the teens and the other people to have it to drive so everybody can ride together and i thank you lord for it in jesus holy name amen well don't forget you know just write on your envelope your full address right on your envelope what what place you want the money to go into and there's three things that ain't on here in that stretch offering so anytime you put in the stretch offering you just write stretch on here somewhere and anytime you put into the the new church or building just write new church and anytime you put into the van just write van on there hey and, and we'll um, you know, when we get new ones, we'll have that added on probably. But we're just thanking the Lord for taking care of every situation, every circumstance in our church, always coming through, and He always shows out. Hallelujah. So, Father, we just thank You right now. We praise You right now. We give You glory right now. We, we lift up our offerings to worship You from here, and we're thanking You that You're doing things above what we could even ask or think. And we give You all praise for meeting every need in Jesus' name. Amen. Man, thank God, it's Wednesday, hallelujah. We're here to know more about Jesus, hear more about Him, and to do what He says. This is going to be part two of knowing what belongs to us. Well, we got to know what belongs to us in Christ. You know, and, and uh, our scripture is Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Well, hallelujah, you know, last week we talked about at least two things belong to us, and one of them is the new birth in Christ. They paid for it at the cross, and the next one is all healing. Man, healing belongs to us. We just have to appropriate it. So this week we're going to talk about, you know, how to appropriate the blessings. How do you appropriate it? You say what the Word of God says concerning that. When the devil attacks you, if he attacks you with pain, sickness, or disease, you just tell him, no. I'm doing what Jesus says. I'm following His Word. His Word said I'm already healed. So therefore, by His Word, I'm already healed because He carried my sickness and disease, so I don't have to carry it. He carried my pain, so I don't have to carry it, Mr. Devil. I'm going to walk according to what the Master has told me to walk according to and not what you're trying to tell me to walk according to. I'm going to walk according to what Jesus Christ did for me at the cross. I'm appropriating what He has already did in His body for me. I'm appropriating that and making that come to pass in my life. And you tell your body to line up with the Word of God. 
Hallelujah. Tell your finances to line up with the Word of God. Do what the Master says. Obey Him. And see how He'll come through for you every single time. Hallelujah, man. I'm telling you what, this year's passing by, flying by. Man, it's uh, time's just flying. I, when I read what Paul said, that life's like a vapor, I see it more and more. This life is just like a vapor. Man, I think about it. Like my mom, she's been dead 35 years. And to her, that's just a few minutes. Amen. In heaven. So I'm just believing God, man. We're all going to come together, have a great family reunion in heaven. And if you got somebody that you know without a shadow of a doubt has went to heaven, you need to do all you can to get there to be with them. Don't just play case or rah, or rah, and you think because you've been to church or went to church when you was younger or our daddy and mama took you to church and showed you and you got baptized in church. No, you evaluate your life. Are you living right? Are you following Jesus? Are you a disciple of Christ? How do you know? you got to look and see. Are you lined up with His Word? Are you going to church? Are you tithing? Are you praying? Are you reading your Bible? Are you submitted to authority? Are you just sitting at home daydreaming, think you're going to heaven, and you live like you want to and do what you want to, and He's not your Lord? Because if He's your Lord, you will be at church. If He's your Lord, He's the Lord of your finances and your time. And if He's your Lord, you're not going to be rebellious to people you work for and people that you're under authority to. You're going to be a joy. They're going to look at you as a joy. Amen? So man, just, just straighten up and live for Jesus in these last days so you can go to heaven and live with us for eternity. That's what this is all about, man, is getting people together to live for Jesus so we can live in eternity together. Man, can you imagine some of the talks and glory times we're going to have in heaven? Hallelujah times, worshiping the Master? Amen. <laughs> yeah, praise God. Well, we're talking about appropriating the blessing. And and you, you if you read this, you know, Dad Hagen, he's got some awesome uh, just, just inserts here. One of the is this. He said, there's no use of me trying to get my healing. All I have to do is believe God's Word and appropriate the healing that Jesus already obtained for me, for me, Robert, on the cross. And I've, it, all I've got to do to receive what already belongs to me, and that includes healing, is learn to appropriate the all spiritual blessings you've already been blessed with. Learn to receive the fullness of your inheritance in Christ in this life. So you got to learn to talk to the devil and tell the devil, no, I'm not, I'm not listening to you. I'm not doing what you said. It don't matter what, what you say is going to happen. You may say I'm going to die, but I'm not going to die. I'm going to live to declare the works of the Lord. I'm not going to die no, from no disease because Jesus has already paid the price for that disease. So I'm appropriating my healing in Christ and I'm already healed. Now you just sit back, Mr. Devil, and watch His Word work in my life. Hello? Do you, you use the same thing for, for sickness and disease and depression and financial lack. You use the same thing for it, proving to the devil that Jesus and the Father has already made a way for you in this life to live blessed and you appropriate it by speaking the words of the living God that came through the mouth of the Messiah, the message that came from His lips. That's what me and you live according to and we speak that out of our mouth believing it and knowing that He's going to take care of us. See, when you when you teach according to these lines and you teach people how that the healing already belongs to us, you'll see that people that walk in faith that grab a hold of this, you'll see in their life, their life will change. And you'll see a person that was sickly start leave, living healthy. You'll see a person that was broke, that never had no money for nothing, start having money and be blessed and have more than enough to give to every good work. Now you'll see the other side. I've seen it years as a pastor. It'll be 20 years this year. It's just hard to believe. I've seen it where people be faithful and tithe, faithful and giving, start giving more, and then they start making more money, and they quit giving. And you can watch it, and you'll watch their life start to unravel and start to be cursed. It's, why? They forgot God. That was their first love. Man, they used to pray just to get money so they could give it to the church. But they got away from loving God. Why? Because we tithe and give in the New Testament. Because we love God and love people. So when you're not doing that, you're not loving Him. I mean, we just had a, you know, the government give out 
thousands of dollars in stimulus checks. Well, I wonder how many of that thousands is going to end up at church in tithes. It should be. you got extra money. And then some of you are praying for God that He'll bring extra money so you can give to the new church, give to the uh, to get the van. And did, 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 did any of that money come and come through your hands and come to the church? Because if God can't trust us to give and come through our hands, then it's going gonna, it's gonna to stop coming. Hello? I don't want it to stop coming. So I'm going to give every time it comes. I'm going to give my tithe and I'm going to give what else He wants. Amen? So that's what you got to look at. If you didn't tithe on that money that came, the stimulus money that you didn't even know you was going to get, you better check your heart and make sure that God is really your Lord and that you really love Him. Hello? Find out what He wants out of it. Instead of you start blowing it on yourself and spending it on yourself. He's got to be Lord of your finance if He's Lord at all. A lot of people, they try to appropriate these blessings from God instead of obeying Him and walking according to what His Word says. And they think that God's just there for them. To, he's a spare tire for them. When if they would trust Him and follow Him, you would, man, you would never have to worry about nothing as far as money and financial sickness and disease if you learn to appropriate the Word that He told us to appropriate. Because if we'll speak what He says... You know, and if we'll believe what he says and appropriate what already belongs to us, we'll see things happen. We'll see God's promises come to pass in our life that are working for me and you. And he's not slack concerning his promises. See, he promised he'll take care of us. Amen. The question is, are you really his? And if he's not Lord of your life, you're not. And you're not going to heaven and he ain't Lord. That's how you get saved. You gotta confess out your mouth, He's Lord, and then believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead. Then you got to become a disciple of His. And you can't just say, Man, I believe in Jesus and I'm going to heaven. Because my Bible tells me even the devils believe and they tremble. No, you you say you believe in God and you do what you want to, and you ain't even trembling. Come on now. But there's so many people in church today and say they love God and say they love Jesus and uh, go to go to church, don't go to church, but they make you want to think make you want to think they going to heaven and they sleeping with their boyfriends and girlfriends, living in fornication. My Bible says to flee fornication, and that means to run from it, aggressively get away from it. In other words, it's something coming after you and, and, and the Holy Ghost is telling you to get away from there. Run is in terror from that like Joseph did. You know why? Because you use your body to commit that. The Bible says in them same Scriptures, when you lay with a whore or a prostitute, then you, the two become one flesh. Well, a lot of people think that means that you, in God's eyes, you're married to Him. Well, you, in one flesh, that means your bodies come together. But you're not in covenant with God. So you're not married in, in God's eyes just because you slept with somebody. I used to believe that. But I've been studying that out lately. No, you've got to come in covenant with God with a man or woman to be married under His covenant. That's the world's way. That ain't God's way. The world's way is flesh and flesh. God's way is spirit, spirit. Amen? So we've got to appropriate the things of God the right way. To, to get what God wants to have in our life to happen in our life. You know, Dad Hagen says in many cases, doctors told him that there was nothing med medical science could do for people he prayed for. There was no known cure for what they had. However, they took God at His Word, acted on as if healing was so, and they were made well and strong. Amen. They were made well and strong. Many of the, the people he's talking about was raised up alive and well and healed from a deathbed. And as they learned how to appropriate what was already belonged to them in Christ, God has a plan of redemption. He wants to set me and you free, and that includes healing in mind in your life, and that includes we don't have to walk in lack. We just got to learn to follow what Jesus said. Do appropriate His Word. Do what the Master's called me and you to do. Hallelujah. Some people say, well, I just don't understand what's going on. I don't understand why this is happening to me. I don't. That's the devil talking. That's not God. Man, when God talks, there's peace and joy and love. Hallelujah. That's what comes from God. 
Hallelujah. You got to appropriate your righteousness in Him according to 2 Corinthians 5.21. For He hath made Him to be sin for us. Jesus was made sin for you who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him, in Christ. My righteousness don't come from, from me. It comes from Jesus Christ. And it's the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I'm in Him. I'm in Him. Man, we got to know what belongs to us in Him. Hey, Amen. That's what I believe I'm going to teach next is in Him, Scriptures. To know me and you, what belongs to me and you in Christ. What we can obtain and take. Amen. Uh, but, you know, there's a great redemptive work that God did in Christ for me and you. And redemption just means, man, we didn't, we wasn't supposed to be like this, but because of what He did at the cross, He made a way where me and you can walk in the redemptive work that He did in Christ. Man, redemption. I've been redeemed. Man, that's what, that's the song that the Christian's gonna be able to sing that the angels can't sing. I'm redeemed. I'm redeemed. I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Man, they can't sing that. Why? They ain't ever been redeemed by it. But me and you have. If we become a Christian and we do what he says, we can go through the throne room boldly and obtain those petitions that we've put before him and obtain mercy in a time of need. Hallelujah. Go to the throne room of Christ. He is the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. He became my righteousness. There was no sin in Him, but yet all sin was put upon Him. <coughs> and He redeemed us. Amen. He redeemed us and set us free. Amen. He broke the back of lack, broke the back of sickness and disease, broke the back of depression. you got no business being depressed if you're a child of the living God. How can you be depressed? And he said, His joy is your joy. His love is your love. His peace is your peace. You know how you can be depressed? But you ain't walking in what He's already gave you. you got to appropriate that in your life. Hallelujah. He, he was made sin for me and you. Hallelujah. He, he was brought into a, a place of sin consciousness so me and you don't have to walk in a place of sin consciousness. And it came on him and he got rid of it and it's gone forevermore. Hallelujah. <laughs> and you know what? By what he did for me and you, we've been delivered from Satan's authority. Satan don't have authority over me and you no more. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 13 and 14, it says, Who have delivered us already? Who have delivered us? We already delivered from Satan and all his authority. We just got to learn to walk in it and appropriate the authority Christ gave us. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and have translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Man, that's a problem. Most people, you've got to learn to walk in the, after the kingdom of God. What's this kingdom? His way of doing things, his will, the, his ways. Man, that's the kingdom of God in whom in Christ we have redemption through his blood. That's why the devil wants to take the blood out of the Bible. Man, He don't want you to walk according to the blood in the Bible. He wants you to walk according to what you've done. No, the blood cleanses me. How? Through the forgiveness and remission of the sins that I had committed. Not just me, but everyone that ever lived. On this earth, ever would live, ever had lived. Jesus took care of the sin problem at the cross. Amen? We've been translated out of the kingdom of darkness. One Bible translation says, We have been delivered us, he, the Father have delivered us from the power of darkness. Man, there's no darkness that can, can overpower you if you're walking in the power of the Son, in the power of the righteousness that the Son had delivered to me and you. Amen. Our bodies will be translated one of these days into the heavenly body. But as long as we live here on this earth and our spirits inside of us has already been translated to be like Christ, we should be ruling our bodies. Hello. We should be telling our bodies what to do. Not letting our bodies tell us what to do. Well, for that to happen, we've got to walk in the authority of Christ and tell this body, you ain't going to act like that. Ephesians 2, 1 says, And you hath he quickened or made alive. That's me and you if you've been born again who were dead in trespasses and sins. 
See, I was dead in trespasses and sin, but He quickened me and made me alive through the blood of Jesus that was shed on the cross and through the redemption plan that God did and all the spiritual blessings He provided for me by me believing and confessing my mouth that Jesus is Lord and believing my heart God raised Him from the dead and then being translated into His kingdom by the power of what He did at the cross. I'm going to follow Jesus and do what He says. Amen. That's, you know, that we think about, talk about things in the future, things are going to happen when Jesus comes back. Well, that's happening right now. I've been translated out of the power of darkness into the power of His Son. Amen. The kingdom of His Son. So I need to be walking that. Praise God. <laughs> A lot of times you'll hear Christian people say, man, I'm praying and i got to be delivered. No, you just got to get in the Word and find that you've already been delivered. In Colossians 1.13, God has delivered us from the power and the authority of darkness. It says God hath. Hath. Hath is past tense. Already done. He's translated us. He's already translated us into the kingdom of His dear Son. So why do we keep walking in the things of darkness? We need to, when, when, when the devil comes against of us with everything he has, every, every weapon he has, and all that is darkness, the devil's kingdom, and everything that goes along with it, every imp, every demonic force, every witch, every warlock, Ever a fortune teller, ever a palm reader, ever spiritual uh, darkness that's not of God, that's of darkness, that's of this world, that's walking according to this world, that's walking in the heavenlies, the powers in heavenly places, they have no power over a child of the living God that has appropriated the spiritual blessings that have already been obtained through the inheritance of Christ that me and you walk in on this earth. They have no power over me and you. Hallelujah. We got to walk in the power that He's already given us. We don't have to pray for deliverance from the devil. We just got to believe we've already been delivered. And walk in that and tell your body, you're not doing that no more. Hello? You're not doing that no more. Eyes, you're not looking at that girl no more. You're not looking at that. Eyes, you're not looking at that man no more. You're not looking at nobody to want them. You're not going to walk in the sin of lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh. You're not going to walk in that no more. You're not going to walk in watch, watching pornography and satisfying your flesh. You're not going to walk in fornication and adultery to satisfy your flesh. No, He's already delivered you from that. Half delivered you. And you're going to walk in that victory every day. And you're going to tell your body every single day you're not doing that. You need to quit looking. Am I going to be delivered next year? No, you're delivered today. And you need to walk in that today. Amen? Walk in that today. Walk in the victory that He's already given you today. Amen? <laughs> the word translate uh, here means that we're taken out of one kingdom and we're put into another. God has taken us out of the kingdom of darkness and He's put us in the kingdom of light, His Son, Jesus Christ. Into His kingdom. Amen? He, he's taken me and you out of the authority of the dark kingdom and He's put us in the authority of light. And light wins everything. Every, life wins every time. If I come into my house and it's pitch dark and I can't see nothing, I flip a switch, guess what? I can see everything. See, a lot of people, you know, darkness is the absence of light. Once light comes in, darkness is gone. Light is not the absence of darkness. Light is light. And when you turn the light on, darkness flees. Well, if you would turn the light on of Christ in you, a lot of that darkness in your life right now hanging around your house would flee. The reason it's there and hanging around because you're walking in sin towards your God, making excuses why you ain't serving Him and obeying Him, and you let them little dark devils hang around instead of walking in the authority of Christ and all that authority of darkness has to go away from you. Because if there's anything that's got power over you, it's because you've allowed it to have the authority over you. Because you have authority that you can walk in in Christ and that authority has to leave because you've been translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. And you have all authority in Christ when you're a believer in Him. So if you're letting all them devils hang around and darkness and stuff hanging around you, it's because you are allowing it to happen. When if you would get in Christ and get a, and use that authority, it would have to leave you. They would have to leave your house and be gone. Amen? <laughs> Man, why don't you just wake up and find out what belongs to you in Christ and walk in it? 
and see things change in your life instead of just keeping doing what you want do and nothing's changing. Having to fight sickness and disease every day instead of getting victory in it. Having to fight, oh, am I saved or not? No, you ought to know if you're saved because the Spirit should bear witness with you. And I ain't talking about a false salvation, a false Jesus. I'm talking about you're obeying Him and doing what He's saying. Hello. You're doing exactly what the Master says. The Bible tells us that these spiritual blessings we're talking about, they belong to us now. So everything that you have need of, the provision has already been made. Me and you just got to learn to walk in that provision and do what Christ says. Hello? Do what Christ says. Who, who has authority over Satan? Anybody that is a Christian that's walking, abiding in the kingdom of light, doing what he said and obeying him. Hearing what he says to do it. You have authority over Satan. Dad Hagen said that, that on, in December of 1952, he was praying in the kitchen of a parsonage. Jesus appeared to him and said, I'm going to teach you concerning the devil, demons, and demon activity. From this day forward, you'll be known by you, you, what is known as my word as discernment of spirits will operate in your life with you are in the spirit. See, there's a gift of discernment of spirits that the, the Holy Ghost will allow to work in your life at times when you need it to work, if we would just totally trust in Him, He'll tell us and He'll lead us in this gift of discernment of spirits of how to figure out when it's a devil, when it ain't a devil, when it's an angel, and when it's not an angel. And He'll show us, if we will listen to Him, when it's a devil, and then He'll give us the power through the authority given to me and you to get rid of these devils from hanging around and being around us, infiltrating our house, infiltrating our workplace, infiltrating our churches. Hello. We need to walk in the discernment of spirits so we can get these things where they don't operate and control us by their little incantations, their, the things they do. I, and I don't care nothing about no witch or warlock or anything as far as ruling and reigning over my life. I have the power of Christ operating in me and I'm going to rule and reign in Him and they'll have no power over me. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm going to follow Jesus. Man, and we could see all power in Matthew 28, verse 18. All power, all authority is given unto me in heaven and earth. So if I, if I stop reading right there, that's just Jesus. He, he's the one that's got it all. It was all given to Him. But as soon as He read that, if you read on, He tells me and you, that that authority he was given, he gave to the church. And he told me and you to go into the world. Hello, we know this. Preach the gospel to every creature. Every creature. And these signs, they're going to follow us that believe. And what are they? In my name, I'll cast out devils. And believers will exercise authority over the devil, according to Mark 16, 15 through 18. Believers should exercise authority over the devil. All that starts from starting to preach the gospel. Preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel is what sets people free. Hey man, the gospel is what sets people free by me and you ministering what Jesus has already done. He's delegated to me and you the authority to operate and rule over demons and devils in our everyday life. That's why it says we should be living as kings down here. We should be decreeing things in the Spirit and watching them happen in the earth. Amen? <laughs> we should be seeing this stuff happen. We, we, in, in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, he... Peter told us our adversary the devil walks around his roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. The question is, are you living in a way where he can devour you? A lot of people think they're okay because maybe their life is okay. Maybe they got plenty of money. Maybe they're not facing sickness and disease. And they think they're okay, but they don't go to church. They don't tithe and give. They don't read the Bible. Don't pray. They may read it every now and then. They may pray when they get a necessity. They're not submitted to nobody in authority. They do what they want to do. Because if you're listening to this and you say that God told you to come to True Christian Fellowship, your pastor's telling you you need to be at church at 10 o'clock on Sunday morning to, to, to honor the Master and do what He says. And if you don't do that and you say you're part of True Christian Fellowship, then you're just in rebellion. And that's a form of witchcraft to God. 
So don't think you're going to be able to use the authority that has been given to you in Christ over the enemy when He knows that you're disobeying your Lord that you say is your Lord and Savior. You can't walk in authority over Him and do what you want to. He knows you. He can read your mail. Hallelujah. Man, we, we, we see that it, there's many different ways in Scripture where things happen. You know, Paul used handkerchiefs and people got healed. You know, the word adversary means an opponent, an enemy, one arrayed against us. Well, guess what? Our adversary is the devil. That, that's the one coming against me and you. He's the, he's the devil. He's our adversary. He's the one coming against us, trying to get us to quit, trying to get us to stop. You know, doing what we know God's called us to do. He's seeking Christians and believers to get them to not do what the Master has told them to do. That's why He fights you so much about going to church, especially coming to True Christian Fellowship where you're going to hear the Word preached about Jesus Christ and what He's taught, said, and did. And we follow Him and do what His Word says. Man, He's going to fight you against that. Man, in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 27 tells us don't even give place to the devil. Well, how many of y'all are giving place to the devil by not obeying Christ? You say, I hear it all the time, y'all. I don't have to go to church to be a Christian. I say, you're exactly right. But once you become a Christian, you're going to want to go to church because John said once you become a Christian, you have a genuine love for the brothers and sisters in Christ. You have a new voice inside of you now when you become a Christian. And that voice is going to tell you to obey God when He said, don't forsake to assemble yourselves together as a matter of some end, but come together with your brothers and sisters in Christ, exhorting one another because the day of Jesus Christ's coming is approaching. Amen. So you got to learn. You got to use the word to tell me stuff. Don't just use what you say. Well, going to church don't make you a Christian. I've heard that too. And I and I come back. Y'all have heard me say it many times. Going to McDonald's don't make you a Big Mac. Going to Burger King don't make you a Whopper. Going to Subway don't make you a sandwich. But if you would learn to follow Jesus and do what He says according to His Word, then you would learn that if you're a Christian, you're supposed to be where He's told you to be. If He told you to be, not flake your symbols, you're supposed to be at church on Sunday. That's what He said. And you, if you're going to follow Him, you've got to appropriate these blessings. that He said all spiritual blessings belong to us in Christ. He's already did them for me and you. Healing is a part of of spiritual blessing. So you you have been blessed in Christ to, to do what the scripture says. You need to study the scriptures on healing. If you got if you got a sickness or disease in your body, study the scriptures on healing. You need to quote them over your life every day. If the doctor gave you a prescription and tells you to take it uh, in the morning, you take it in the morning. If he tells you to take it at night, you take it at night. If he tells you to take it morning and night, you're going to take it morning and night. If he tells you to take it three times a day, you're going to take it three times a day if you're going to obey your doctor and do what he says to get healed according to how he knows how to heal you. Well, if you're going to obey uh, Jesus and what He said in appropriating your healing, then you need to find the Scripture on healing. You need to quote them. And all day when you think about them, you need to quote them. If, if pain attacks your body, you need to quote them. Hello, if disease attacks your body, you need to quote them. Sickness, uh, He carried my sickness and disease. I'm not going to carry it. He, he carried all my sorrows, my pains. So I'm not going to carry them. I'm going to do what Jesus said. I'm going to follow Him. And in the name of Jesus, healing belongs to me because I'm born again. We got to learn to quote what the word says. Remember, it's the it's the doers of the word, the doers of the word who prosper in this life. See, when you get to heaven, you're not going to need the word to prosper. You're not going to need the word to get healed. You're not going to need the word to take care of financial lack. You're not going to need the word to get rid of depression. But here on this earth, you're going to need the word to prosper and walk in the authority through the name of Jesus for things to happen in your life. For you to walk as in as heaven was living through you on this earth. That's why we pray, Father in heaven, you know, uh, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed it be thy name. And then we pray, let heaven come down and flow through us on this earth. Let thy will be done on this earth just like it is in heaven. So we need to be letting His Word speak to us so and knowing that we have power and authority over every evil spirit, over every force of evil, over everything the devil tries to throw at us. We have authority in it and over it in Christ Jesus. 
So we just got to learn to walk in our authority that He's given us, knowing that Jesus is Lord. We got to know that as we walk in that, things have to change in our life because that's what belongs to us in Christ. Amen. Well, praise God. Well, we love you. We'll see you soon. Hopefully we see you Sunday at 10 a.m. at church at True Christian Fellowship. Come ready to worship and magnify Jesus. Well, we're so thankful. Man, it is altar call time. Praise God. So if you're here today, you know, if you listen to the message today, and uh, we're just so thankful that you joined in with us today. We're, and if you need to give your whole life to Jesus right now, we want you to, 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 to repeat after me. Say, Father, I come to you today. I believe your word. I've been convicted today of sin in my life. Lord, I thank you for rescuing me from my sins. I thank you for shedding your blood and presenting an offering to the Father that took away all my sin. Now, Father, I believe right now in Jesus. Jesus, I confess you as my Lord. Father, I believe in my heart that you raised Jesus from the dead. And according to your word right now, I'm born again. Now, Father... I've believed in Him. I'm relying on clinging to and trusting in Him. Now, Father, make me a disciple. Show me Jesus' doctrine and let someone put me under someone that will teach me how to follow His doctrine and live in accordance with it. If you don't have a church home, Make your church home true Christian fellowship and come and let Pastor Robert be over you in the Lord. And I'll teach you how to follow Jesus through the teachings of Christ. Amen. Now, if you've uh, given your whole life to Jesus, man, just send me a, a uh, if you got my phone number, send me a text. If you don't, then send me an email. Just, just, just please take the time and send me an email at GodIsSlapAwesome at BellSouth.net. So I can give a praise report on the air of what God's did in your life. Amen. Amen. And that goes for all y'all watching that's in the church and God's doing things for you. I've been telling you now to send me praise reports to my email address or text me. And if you got one and ain't done it, then people are missing out on hearing your report. Because the Bible says, make your deeds known among the people. So if he's done anything for you, you need to let me know through email. Or through a text so I can do it on the next service and say, Man, we just want to praise God for God doing this in so-and-so's life. Amen? And we're so thankful. And Lord, right now we're, we're believing that your word says we can lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. We can send your word and people can get healed. So right now if there's any problem in your body, the doctors gave you a bad report, no matter what it is, Right now, I ask you to put your hand on that. I'm going to stretch forth my hand. I'm believing right now in Jesus' name. The anointing is flowing through this, coming into you wherever your hand is, and we're driving out that demonic force that's trying to attack itself to your body, and you're going to walk totally healthy, healed, and whole. You're a healed woman in a healthy body. You're a healed man in a healthy body. Now just receive that and receive it with thanksgiving and praise God that you've been delivered from whatever that circumstance is. Amen? And just let Him know how thankful you are that you're walking in victory in Jesus. Amen. And we're just so thankful for y'all. We can't wait to, to, to see y'all again. And, uh, and we love y'all so much. And uh, uh, we, we praise God for you. We praise God for you. We're so thankful for you. Hallelujah. And don't forget, if you're doing your offering by mail, don't forget to send it. If you're doing it by the church, drop it off, put it in the slot. And we're so thankful for y'all, your faithfulness. And we praise God for you. And we thank God for you. Amen. And we thank God for more coming. In Jesus' name, amen.